Hallelujah, Lord. You are my strength. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Come on, let's just give God some little praise. Hallelujah. Father, you're worthy to be praised, oh God. We exalt you, oh God. Just take a minute. Just take a minute. Recognize that he is your strength. Recognize that he is your hope. Hallelujah. Bless the be the name of the Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Father, we worship your God. We magnify your God. Father, we lift up a high note of praise, oh God. That in spite of what, oh God, you are our strength, oh God. Hallelujah. Bless the be the name of the Lord God in the highest. Father, we magnify your God. Father, we invite your presence right now, oh God. As the work go forth, oh God. Father, let it fall on airs, oh God. Father, as I'm willing to hear, oh God, your word. My God, we bless you, oh God, for all that you have done, my God. For we magnify you because you are a great and awesome God. We glorify you, oh God. We give you praise, oh God, for you are worthy to be praised. We worship you, oh God. We give you thanks, oh God, for you are our strength indeed. You are our hope, oh God. You are our peace, my God. God, we bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, oh God. We bless you, oh God. We bless you. Praise the Lord. He is our strength, amen. To God be the glory, my God. We're going to continue giving God thanks and praise for all that He has done thus far in terms of being with our bishop, our leader, our shepherd, and his wife. We pray that God is going to continue to show off. I pray that God is going to continue to show off. We have a God who does show off. We have a God who does show off. I want to thank God that he's able to show off. You see, when you're faithful, God will be faithful. I've actually seen before my eyes where faithfulness does prevail. Faithfulness is important. And our pastor has been faithful and God said, hey, I am going to be faithful likewise. So it's a lesson for us. To always to be faithful. The title of my message this morning is, is Take Two. Take Two. Most of us are familiar with a phrase, with that phrase, when it comes to the filming industry, the movies, Take Two. But this morning, it's, it sort of have like a double meaning. And I think this double meaning could apply to this message this morning. Take two. For those who don't know, take two has to do, especially when it comes to the movie industry. Whenever you're filming a movie, and you mess up the first scene, and you're going to do a second scene, before you start the second scene, what do you say? Take two. It also could mean, take two could also mean, if I have $100 in my pocket, and I say, Brother Duncan, hold $100 now. Huh? And I give Brother Duncan $100. And I decide to be generous. I say, you know what? I feel Brother Duncan want more than $100. You understand? So I take out, a, you know, you're saying five. All right. I'll take out just one more, just one more, just one more. I say, Brother Duncan, take two. Take two, because I understand it's important for you to take two. I understand that you need some kind of level of backup. So I tell you, take two. So based upon that, that's the root of my message. That we, want to, we, want be, we, want to, we want to be able to take two as we get deep into 2022. I hear God saying, take two. And referring to the whole movie setting, sometimes in life we mess up certain things. And for some of us, God is saying take two. And for some or for others, it's like we don't take what? Must see, a hundred? Take five. Some of us don't take a thousand. I can't count what take I on. I ain't mama guy, I ain't fool. I can't count what take I on. But I thank God that God could say, take and take, take, take. But in taking two, I believe we're entering into a time and an era where we need extra. And two is so important. The power of two. It only took two posts 
in Exodus chapter 12, verses 22, which says, And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood. Two. It only took two tablets for the hand of God to write the Ten Commandments. In Deuteronomy chapter 9 verses 10. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God. And on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. Praise God. It took two pillars for Samson to remove to make a difference. Two. According to Judges chapter 16 verses 29. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood. And on which it was born up. Of one with his right hand and the other with his left. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, take two. And instead of saying take two, man, take two. When you come to our dialect, you have a kind of raw kind of meaning, take two. So like we were saying, we say, um, I want you to throw the, throw the stone for me. No, man, pet the stone. Take two. So it have its meaning. The Bible also talks about a two-edged sword. In Psalms 149 verse 6, let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Not one edge, but two-edged sword. I said before, and I'm going to say it again. We are entering into a time where God is saying, my people of God, take two. Take two. Mark chapter 6, verse 78. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them out forth by two and two. <laughs> the power of two, eh? And God and gave them power over unclean spirits and command them that they should take nothing for their journey. Save a staff only, no script. No bread, no money in their purse. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9. I want to just break down and show you all how important two is. Eh? Two. One of the wisest men that ever lived said it. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Same Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 11 to 12. Again. If two... Lie together, then they have heat. <laughs> but how can one be warm alone? Question. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. I want to read it again. I want to catch it in the spirit. And if one prevail against him, okay, I get you with one. But two shall withstand him. And a threefold call is not quickly broken. We need two in, wait, it's 2022. Oh, no, honestly, I didn't, I didn't catch that. Huh? <laughs> honestly, God know me hard. I need to study that. So we need two in 2022. Oh, <laughs> I'm excited. Now listen, I can't pronounce this word too properly, eh? but um, um, I ask some people, catch me tear to pronounce this word. You know some words you give it troubles? Somebody pronounce to me D-U-O. Duo. Duo. I hear duo. You see what I mean? I hear duo. I hear duo. Duo. All right. Duo. D-U-O. Right? Now listen. We, we, we know about what you call in history. You have some famous D-U-O. That's not going to do, right? So you understand what I'm talking about. We have some famous D-U-O. So if it's like when you call one of them, you automatically kind of call in the other. Understand me? So, so we sat in. So it's like, all you follow me, right? Just, just come with me. For the famous D-U-O. We have Batman and... Ah, oh, boy. You understand? And we have... Um, well, if some, of them, some may know and some may not know this one. Will Smith and... Carlton. Yeah. Tom 
woman. Ooh. Beauty and the yeah. Onion. <laughs> Macaroni and <laughs> bacon and yeah. Romeo and Ooh. Pinky and the Right, listen, these are old school ones. This is really old. Let me see how I can, I can find some older age here. Remember chips, right? Punch on. All you know chips, the police pit here. So it was chips on. So it was punch on. Ah! Old woman, <laughs> sorry. I know it too. That's it. Punch on baker. You understand? That old school. Now here is one, here is one, here is one, here is one. This is the best one, this is the best one, this is the best one. Pastor Roland. Now the thing about this DUO is that they sound as if they are the same, but they are not the same. It's just that because they have one objective and one goal, they sound similar. So I told you the thing about Batman and Robin, they sound as though they're twin, but they're not really twin. It's just that they have one objective, to fight crime. And because they have the objective to fight crime, they sound the same. So when you think about Batman and you think about Robin, they have two different characteristics. They have two different types of skills to deal with the hour of the day. Now understand this. The Bible is not exempted from what you call duos. Mind you, let me interject. Sometimes as we highlight this DUO in the Bible, understand that I'm not saying what is better than the other. It's just that they complement each other. It's almost as if you have two hands. I wouldn't exactly say, listen to me, choose. You want your left or your right hand? If I'm going to chop off one. You want both of them. So that it's not a case where your left hand is better than your right hand. As you, may, you may use one more than the other. But at the end of the day, you want both of them. Because both of them complement each other. And it works. So as we look at the DUOs of history, there's something in the Bible where there's certain DUOs and the thing is, that I've, I've come to understand that most of us are not aware of these DUOs. So that we have gone through life just depending basically upon one. Not recognize that the other one is basically a complement to really deal with certain situations in our lives. So I'm going to take a couple of seconds, minutes actually, and highlight some of the DUOs, DUOs in the Bible. The first one, and tell me if you agree, and listen to me, if you really think about it, there's so much that so much some of us can come up with. The first one is what you call mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. Now, bearing in mind and think about as I, as I go through this, think about what I just explained to the Batman and the Robin. Eh? So, mercy and grace. Understand that. If one is not careful, you think it's the same thing. But it's not. However, the objective and goal is the same. But when it comes to mercy and grace in our lives, they have different roles. And some of us may find ourselves embracing one than the other. When really and truly, when you have both of them, boy, the best illustration I've ever gotten with mercy and grace is this. Listen to me. I, as a police officer, I hit in Duncan hard these days. So I got easy upon Duncan a little bit. If I'm a police officer driving on the road, Sister Jason, driving she car, and then it's like she break her traffic lights. I pull up on Sister Jason, I say, listen to me. Your way to that is real nonsense. You did nonsense. Why you break the traffic lights? And she started to beg. Ask forgiveness. So I decide, you know what? It's a good day. So I give you a bribe. What I've demonstrated is mercy. But lo and behold, as much as I give you a bribe, I decided to take her $200 from my pocket and I give you a say, make sure you behave yourself. In Jesus' name. What I've just demonstrated to her is grace. 
She ain't deserve that, you know, but she get it. She ain't work for it, but she get it. When I look at the Bible, so that whenever you see the word grace, it's all right. God is good. Because look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4. It said, but God, who is rich in mercy, look at mercy first, for his great love, where it he loved us. That's mercy. Fine. Then you go on to say in Jude chapter 1, verses 2. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Great scriptures, listen to it. Romans chapter 3, verses 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verses 23. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, amen. And all these scriptures are good to embrace. But whenever you see mercy and grace together, watch out. There's something interesting about that. There's something whereby you're getting a little bit more than you're barking for. One of the places I found mercy and grace is, listen to me, it's found in Nehemiah. Well, it's several places, eh? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 is one of them. A famous verse of scripture. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. And it's done there. Listen to me. That we may obtain mercy. You know what is the word that catch me? Me. The possibility exists that you may not receive it. So it's a case where some of us are actually dabbling in the grace. But you have mercy. We dabbling in mercy and you have grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Some of us will find ourselves in situations where you need to tap into the two. Take two now. Take two. Operate in the full capacity of mercy and grace. Here's the other place I found it. And it had to be there. Nehemiah chapter 9 verses 31. It says, nevertheless... For thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly, thou didst not utterly consume them, nor forsake them, for thou art a gracious and merciful God. You know who is it them? Israel boy. Them people give pressure. And we know the history is Israel. When God took them out from Exodus, but you talk about complaint, you actually see God mercy. And grace in operation. Because there are times when God could have just consumed them and take them out. But because of his mercy, they was not consumed. And there are times in which they got gotten that they didn't deserve. But his manna is a pillar by um, a cloud by day. And all kind of different things they were actually getting. Imagine you getting a shoes that are growing on your foot. Clothes that are actually growing on you. You don't have to go by um, Tito and spend how much hundreds of dollars? Checkpoint. You don't have to go right there and then you walk in on the road and after a while your shoes are to get bigger. You see this? Your shoes are to get You talk for grace. That's where grace and mercy tap in. So for 2022, this is for somebody. Don't just dumble in one. Dumble in the two where God's grace and mercy be operative in your life. Because I just read the scripture that you may, the possibility exists that you may not get it. You may not catch it. Amen? The other one, the other D-U-O, is power and strength. Power and strength. They sound the same, but they look slightly different. So the possibility exists that some of us, we tap into power, but not strength, you know. Some of us, we tap into strength, but we lack power. Let me see if I could break this and explain this. Only because it's COVID, eh? So I got to ease up. I have a bunch of keys here. Andrew, catch. Good. Old. I give Andrew a bunch of keys. I've just given a bunch of keys. I show me can. Give me a house key. House key. House key. Right? So I hear me house key. What I've just given Andrew is power. 
The man has power breaks. The man has keys. Like up yourself. You can go in my house, do what you want. But the thing is, if Brother Duncan and let's say Brother Tim, good stupid young men, decide to stand by the door, and Andrew decide, you know what? I go in Brother Cohen's house and black myself. But Andre gets up and go by the door. But I don't care about that team. Who are talking about Andre? What Andre has just lacked his strength. He has the power, but he lacked the strength. Hence the reason why the Bible talks about renewing one's strength. Not so much power, you know. And that is the thing with some of us. We have power, and the power is there. But we lack the strength to tap into the power. Knowledge is power. We know that when you're buying knowledge, shall be born in heaven and all these different things. But sometimes what some of us lack and the devil is beating us with is our strength. So as you get to lose strength within your mind, you lose strength within your spirit, that ability to really tap in and really get into the power that you should, you're unable to. Here's scripture. Hear what Samuel said. Samuel chapter 22, verses 33. 20, 33, yes. God is my, not just my strength, and power. And he makes my way perfect. So some of us, we may find ourselves in situations, honestly, where it's important not just to tap into power, but strength. But strength. It says that strength is applying force to overcome resistance. That's strength. Applying force to overcome resistance. However, power is applying force to overcome resistance in a short space of time. So let me explain that. What does that, that have to do with Christianity and our lives? Some of us are applying strength. Yes. Let's say for example. A perfect example is where we got together and pray. If we had done it separately, we have been applying strength. But if that you come together, that's when we apply power. Because power has to be in a short space of time. Sometimes you go through life and they certain things you want from God. And all that we are depending on is strength. But God is saying, the time is coming. We need to tap into power. Because power has to do with unity. Power has to do also with fasting. I hope my pastor said it one time. One of the fastest way to get something from God. Go on some fast. And that's when you really tap into power. When you have the ability to fast and come together in unity. Where do you know the difference? Know the difference. When it came to David, David had what you call both strength and power. And first, dealing with Satan and his demons, we also need both strength and power. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increased strength. One is to give and one is to increase. One is to give, and one is to increase. Same Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 to 31. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And that is exactly what is happening. As I look around, I tell myself, and I thought, there was a point of time when I actually asked God, why is it that so much of our young men and young people are just falling aside? And see where it lies. That's the reason why. They're walking, basically, they're not taking time off to renew their strength. They have the power, you know. He has the keys. But by the time he reached by the door, he lacked the strength. It doesn't take away the fact that he has the power. But by the time he reached by the door, he lacked the strength to tap into that power. 
So sometimes we find ourselves, we have power, but we have no strength. And sometimes we have strength, you know. But we still have the power. So the same illustration with the keys. So let's say, for example, I didn't give Brother Andre that key. And I tell Brother Andre, I said, Brother Andre, I want you to take my car, and I want you to make a spin for me and buy something nice for your wife. Go buy the most expensive song and buy something nice for your wife. So Brother Andre gets up and he goes outside. And by the time he reaches outside, he realizes he says, but I don't have the key. What he demonstrated, he had the strength. But he didn't have the key, he didn't have the power. Oh, the possibility exists. Let's say he goes outside, he didn't have the key. And by the time he turned the key, Nothing. And when you open the bonnet, no engine. You had the strength. You had the strength. You went outside because you actually got up and you went outside. But what you lacked was the power. You lacked the power. And as I said, power could come through unity in prayer. Power come through fasting, seeking God's face. That is where we had the power. We need to have power. Some of us are working on strength. We pray as we pray, yes. But there comes a time. Listen, there will come a time when they need to tap into power. Especially in this 2022, you know. Take two. Take two. Take two. 